So let's go ahead and finish talking about chapter two here, the, uh, the end of chapter two. All right. So, uh, let's see here. What do we got first? Okay. Uh, so George on page 28, George cut the cards and put out a solitaire lay slowly and deliberately. So I just want to talk very quickly about solitaire in case you don't know what it is. It is a card game where you lay out seven rows of cards and you are trying to pile them all up at, by suit um, from king on down. So if you don't know how to play it, whatever. It's kind of fun. But uh, anyway, George is sitting there playing the game solitaire. So just remember that. Think about that. Why do you think he would be playing this game out of all the possible card games to play? All right. Um, so Curly was kind of causing some trouble. He said earlier, let the big guy talk. And... George is a little concerned about this. George is like, man, he's kind of a jerk. And he tries to tell Lenny, like, Lenny, you stay away from him. If he causes you any trouble, you walk to the other side of the room. Okay. Um, so let's see here. Yeah. That's page 29. So George is saying stay away from him. And then on page 30, it's kind of funny. Uh, so George is saying, look, we got to try and get a little stake together. We got to save some money. We got to save maybe a couple hundred dollars. So we can't quit this job just yet. We got to stay here with this job. And he says, don't let him pull you in, Lenny. Don't let him create a fight. Don't let him get you riled up. Don't let him draw you into his fight. But then he says, but, but if he socks you, if he punches you, let him have it. Now, we know that let him have it means fight him, kick his butt. But Lenny's so, so sweet. He's like, let him have what? What would I give him? I don't know. What do you want me to give to Curly? So it's kind of a cute response. It's kind of funny. But the point is, George is like, look, don't let him bully you around. But if he's going to cause some trouble, Lenny, kick the crap out of him because you're totally good. But don't. Just stay away from him. Stay away from him. And Lenny's like, okay, I'll stay away from him because I want to tend the rabbits. All right. Uh, and then we get uh, Curly's wife coming in. And she says she's looking for Curly. And look at the way she stands. She stands with her back against the door, her body thrown forward. Uh, she, she looks her fingernails. It says she bridles, which is kind of like she kind of shakes her body out a little bit. And she's showing off is what she's doing. Okay. Um, so George is very, very kind of cold and harsh to her. He's like, not here. Simple answers. Um, I'll tell him you were looking for him. And she's kind of, you know, friendly and she's talking. And then Slim comes in. She says hi to Slim. She says she's trying to find, uh, she's trying to find her husband. And that's where we get on page thirty-two. This interesting line: "She was suddenly apprehensive." Slim said, "You're not trying very hard. I seen him going in your house, and she's suddenly apprehensive." Well, what's apprehensive mean? Well, apprehensive could mean scared, nervous, uh, uncomfortable. So what changes for her? She's kind of, I mean, let's say it. She was being kind of flirtatious, a little flirty. And then all of a sudden, she's got to go right now. So what changed? What information did she get that would cause her to leave so quickly? All right. Uh, George adds a little context when she leaves. and It's like, man, she is a tramp. And Lenny's like, she's pretty. Now, remember, we know just very small clues as to what happened in Weed with Lenny grabbing things that he thought were pretty, the dress, and scaring the woman. And so George's like, kind of 
physically beats him up just a little bit, grabs him by the ear and says, don't you even look at her. Don't even talk to her. So, and then on page 32, Lenny says, I don't like this place. This ain't no good place. I want to get out of here. Hmm. George again says, well, we got to keep the steak. We got to keep working until we can make some money. All right. Now we get to Slim. Slim, he is described as the prince of the ranch. And if you look at page 33, we get some amazing characterization, some description of him. Okay. Uh, he was like royalty. He could drive 10, 16, 20 mules with a single line to the leader. Now, I have no idea what that means, to be totally honest. I have never worked on a farm or a ranch, but I get the sense that this is a very difficult task and Slim does it with ease, without any trouble. He is capable of killing a fly on a wheeler's butt with a bullwhip without touching the mule. Again, I don't know what a lot of those words mean. I think they're very specific jargon that have to do with you know, this kind of labor and work. But I get the sense that Slim is exceptionally skilled. I mean, if you've ever tried to kill a fly with, you know, a newspaper or a magazine or fly swatter, like, it can be tricky. And he's able to kill a fly with a whip. That's impressive. There was a gravity in his manner. Gravity here is a word that means there's, there's, a, there's a depth to him. There's a seriousness. And that when he speaks, everyone else listens. And that when he speaks on anything, whether it's politics or love, people listen to him because you know what? They respect and admire Slim because he's just an amazing guy. So this is who we're dealing with, with Slim. And his age, he might have been 35 or 50, but it just kind of gives us a sense he's got this kind of handsome face, this timeless face, and that people are drawn and attracted to him. They appreciate who he is. All right. So he comes in, he talks to George, and uh, so they're kind of getting off on pretty good terms. George and Lenny are meeting Slim. And Carlson comes in, big stomached man. Oh, skip this. This is very important. Page 35. I've even got a mark. I forgot. Slim looked through George and beyond him. Ain't many guys travel around together, he mused. I don't know why. Maybe everybody in the whole damn world is scared of each other. Now, if you remember, the boss is like, wait, you guys travel around together? And Curly was like, wait, you guys travel around together? And now Slim is like, wait, you guys, you travel around together? People don't do that. That's weird. So three times we get this same idea that George and Lenny being together is odd and strange. All right, now we get Carlson coming in. And Carlson starts talking about Candy's dog and how the dog smells so bad and how the dog can't eat, can't hardly walk. Dog is just useless. Now, one of the sad facts of animal life is that what we tend to do with animals that just can't live anymore is we put them to sleep, which is just a friendly way to say we kill them. And so Carlson is saying, you know what? It's time for Candy to get rid of his dog. But Slim, you have all these new puppies. So Slim, why don't you give Candy a new puppy? He'll get rid of his old dog. It won't stink so bad. And we'll all be happy. Candy will have dog. I won't have to smell his old dog. Win-win, right? We'll come back to that later. But here's where I want to focus on right now, page 36. The dinner triangle, ding a ling a ling a ling a ling a ling, ling rings. Everybody leaves for dinner. George and Lenny are the only ones left in the bunkhouse. Everybody else is gone now. Everyone's gone to dinner. George and Lenny are alone. Lenny was watching George excitedly. George rumpled his card into a messy pile. Yeah, George said, I heard him. Wait, 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 wait. Lenny didn't say anything here. But George responds. Yeah, I heard him, Lenny. I'll ask him. Wait, 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 wait. George 
is responding to nothing being said. So critical readers, what we recognize here is that Lenny was watching George excitedly. And you know, because you can feel when people are looking at you, right? George is sitting here and he's putting his cards away and he can feel Lenny looking at him. And he knows exactly what Lenny's thinking because he knows Lenny. And so he can feel that look. And he's doing the car. He's like, yeah, Lenny, I heard him. So what would Lenny have said if Lenny spoke here? Look at the context. I heard him. I'll ask a brown and white one. Come on, let's go to dinner. I don't know if he has a brown and white one. You ask him, George, so he don't kill any more of them. So what is it Lenny is basically saying to George with his eyes? George, he has puppies. You said you might get me a puppy because it would be better for me to pet. And he's got extra puppies. George, he's got extra puppies. Did you hear that, George? He's got extra puppies. George, give me an extra puppy. George, give me a puppy. George, give me a puppy. And that's why George says, yeah, I heard him, Lenny. I'll ask him. And Lenny's so excited. He wants a brown and white one. So the point is this. Lenny doesn't have to speak. George knows his friend so well that he knows what Lenny is thinking. Based on the context of the conversation, Lenny heard there's extra dogs. Lenny wants a dog. George knows he wants an extra dog or wants a dog. And so George says, without any prompting, George just goes, yeah, I know, Lenny, I heard him. I'll ask him. All right, now, George and Lenny are just about ready to leave. They're the last ones in the bunkhouse, and they're going to now go out to dinner. And right at the last moment, Pop 37, Curly comes in. You seen a girl around here? He demanded angrily. Now, Curly's wife was in the bunkhouse. She said she was looking for Curly. And then she was told Curly's in her house. So she leaves suddenly. Curly comes into the bunkhouse. See my wife? George says a half hour ago. Well, what the hell was she doing? Said she was looking for you. So we got Curly and Curly's wife, and they're always crossing paths, right? So Curly leaves kind of upset. And then... George and Lenny are gone. The bunkhouse is empty. Nobody's in there. Everybody's at dinner. The dog is just laying on the floor. And then, the very last paragraph, Curly popped into the doorway again and stood looking into the room. Well, look at that. Page 30, uh, top of page 37, uh, Curly... Bounced in, and then Curly popped in. Why do you think Curly is kind of like flinging the door open and coming in? <sniffs> kind of odd behavior, don't you think? So what do you think's going on there? What do you think he's doing? Okay, so if I could summarize chapter two very quickly, George and Lenny get to the ranch. And the boss signs them in, says, you guys go around together? That's weird. Candy is introduced. He's the old man. We get Curly. He's kind of a jerk, and he really doesn't like Lenny. We get Curly's wife, and she's friendly, but maybe a little too friendly. She's got the eye, as Candy says. We meet Slim, and Slim seems like a legitimately nice, good guy. We get Carlson, who doesn't like Candy's smelly old dog. And we finish up with Curly being very, very suspicious. He seems to think that his wife might be hiding in the men's bunkhouse. So, anyway, that's chapter two. All right, thanks for paying attention. Bye now.